And if you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to the New Testament. The New Testament book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. While you're finding your text, let me say thank you, Brother Sam, for the privilege and the opportunity of being here this morning. It's always an honor to be asked to come preach, but when you get an invitation to come back the second time, that's a blessing. Uh, so I thank you for that, Brother Sam. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. This has been on my heart for some time. Don't know uh, who it may be for, but I know it's for someone here. You may think, well, preacher, it's, uh, you know, as we get into the message, what go, might go through your mind is, preacher, I can think of this person or that person that I wish was here to hear this. But no, God knew exactly who was going to be here this morning. Has it ever occurred to you that nothing has ever occurred to God? It, nothing takes God by surprise. Amen. So God knew exactly who was going to be here this morning. And Brother Sam, I believe with all my heart that God sent this message exactly for someone here in this very room this morning. Amen. So I want... Hey, this is my... Let me just say this and we're going to preach. This is my philosophy when it comes to preaching. Get it in preaching gear... And preach. But give me something along the way. Give me some food along the way. Something that can help me throughout the week. And last time I was here, I couldn't even talk on Monday. I was so hoarse. I, I just gave you all I had. Amen. We're going to take and back it down just a little bit this morning. and uh, We're going to try to keep it out of overdrive. But I want you to stay with me. I remember a couple of years ago, Brother Sam... I was up in Ruffin, North Carolina. I was about 15 minutes outside of West Virginia uh, preaching a revival one week. And one night I preached uh, a pretty lengthy message. And I'm going to try to refrain from doing that this morning. Glenda's done told me I'm on a timer. So she'll throw something at me if I get to going too long. But I was preaching in revival that week. And one night it was a lengthy message. And a lady came through after the service was over with. Brother John shook my hand. She said, Preacher, she said, that was a fine message. She said, but it would have made a better series. Amen. So, there you go. I hope you don't feel that way this morning when we get done. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. I only want to read one verse of Scripture. Verse number 7. Paul said, unless I should be exalted above measure... Through the abundance of the revelation there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. In this chapter, in this verse, Paul talks about a burden that he had to carry, a problem that he had to deal with. Now we don't know exactly what Paul's thorn was. We don't know what Paul's burden, what his problem was, and for good reason. He didn't tell us. But in verse number 10 of this chapter, Paul uses the word infirmity. Several times throughout the four Gospels, this same word is translated as sickness or disease. Be what it may, this Sickness, this disease, this thorn was a great burden to Paul. It was a great problem in his life. He uses the word in verse number 7, buffet. It is a very strong word. The, the word buffet literally means to beat till one's black and blue, to pound. Paul said, this thorn in my life, this problem, it pounds me, it beats me until I am black and blue. Now the word thorn appears in the Bible over 50 times. The first time that we see the word thorn in Scripture is in Genesis chapter number 3. You remember because of man's disobedience, because of his sin, God cursed the ground. And He said that from now on, that the ground would bring forth thorns and thistles. And if man was going to eat bread, he would eat bread by the sweat of his face. God cursed the ground. Every time that we see the word thorn in Scripture, it's always associated with heartache, with pain, with problems, with suffering. You remember in John chapter 19 verse 5, the Scripture says that they took and they planted upon Jesus' head a crown of thorns. 
And in chapter 5, the Bible says that he went forth wearing the crown of thorns. Now, while I may not know everyone here this morning, Brother Sam, I believe with all of my heart that each and every person in this building, somewhere you've got a thorn in your life. There's a problem that right now you're having to deal with. There's a heavy burden in your life that you're having to tote. All, there's none of us that's exempt from the problems of life. I heard a man say the other day, said once you get saved, all your problems will go away. There's not but one problem with that. You won't find it in the Scriptures. All of us have problems in our life. And Paul said, this burden, this problem, it pounds me. And I don't know what your problem may be this morning. It could be that your problem, your thorn, is a physical problem. There may be someone here that is experiencing health issues. There may be someone here this morning, and your thorn is emotional problems. And when you're sick emotionally, you're battling depression or discouragement. And let me just take a time out. Can I take a time out and say something about depression? Did you know that Christian people even face depression? My attitude earlier in life towards depression was just, get over it. But that's like telling a cancer patient, just get over it. That's like telling a diabetic, just get over it. You don't just get over it. And when someone is sick emotionally, it touches and affects every area of their life. And that emotional pain can be far more worse than any physical problem that you may ever experience or face. It could be that your problem this morning is a marital problem. You may have problems in your home with your kids. I don't know. It may be that your problem is something in your past and even though God has already forgiven you, it keeps rising up in your life and you can't seem to forgive yourself and it just keeps beating you down. I don't know what your problem may be this morning, but as we examine Paul's thorn this morning, I hope and I pray that we'll find help to deal with our own thorns in our life. The first truth I want to say this morning is I want you to notice the reason for Paul's thorn. Why would a loving God, why would a caring God allow one of His choice servants to receive a thorn in the flesh? I don't believe there's accidents or coincidences in the life of a believer. Everything that happens, God either allows it to happen or He either causes it to happen. There's no coincidences. And when trouble makes its way into our life, when tragedy makes its way into our life, the very first thing that we always do, Brother Sam, we always ask, why? And even though we may not ask it from here, we can't help but to ask from here. I know there's been several things, Brother Paul, that I've been through in my life that has left me asking God, why? God, why in the world would you allow me to go through this? God, why would you allow this to happen? (coughs) And I remember there was times in my life, Brother John, I even felt condemned. I felt guilty for asking why. But one day I read about a man who hung on a cross. And at midday, darkness covered the land. And as that earth shook, there was a cry from that cross. said, my God, my God, why, why, why hast thou forsaken me? Even the Lord Jesus asked why. If you study this chapter, Paul talks about an experience that he had. And as you study the verses, you get the impression that this experience, it it was so sacred, it was so holy, that Paul was reluctant to even talk about it. In the first part of chapter number 12, as you read it, Paul says, I knew a man. It's as if he was talking, Brother Sam, about someone else. But as the chapter unfolds, you find out that Paul was actually the man. He was talking about himself. And we don't know what Paul's problem was. 
And I don't know, Paul, the Bible says that Paul, he was called up to the third heaven. He went to paradise. He went to where God is. And the Bible doesn't shed very much light on present day paradise. As a matter of fact, it's only mentioned in Scripture three times. And I confess to you this morning, I, I really don't know if Paul went to heaven. If he went, And it, it don't bother me that bad because Paul himself wasn't real sure. It was about the time, Brother Sam, it was about 14 years prior to the writings of 2 Corinthians. It would have been about the time, Brother John, that Paul took his first missionary journey, about the time that he was stoned and left for dead at Lystra. And there are Bible scholars who believe that Paul was actually, that he actually died, Brother Gary, and he went to heaven. And I confess to you this morning, I don't know. But Paul said, whether I was in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows, but I don't know. But I'll tell you what Paul did say. Paul said, I'm in a strength betwixt two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. So you may take and you may be facing some problems this morning. You may have some health challenges in your life this morning. But can I tell you something, beloved? It's going to get better. As a matter of fact, it's going to get far better. And Paul said, this problem, it beats me. Could you imagine, Brother Ronnie, what it's like going to heaven and not being able to talk about it? We go on vacation. And we can't wait to get back home to tell our friends and our families what we saw and what we did. Well, Paul went to heaven. And if Paul was standing here this morning before you and you was to ask him, Paul, what was it like? He wouldn't tell you. He'd just cover his mouth. With, Paul, what did you see? Paul said, I saw things that the mind can't even fathom, can't comprehend. And he said, I'm in a strength betwixt two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. And because of the magnitude of this revelation, God knew that it was quite possible that Paul could become puffed up. That Paul could become arrogant. That Paul could become proud and prideful. So Paul said because of that, there was given to him a thorn in the flesh. God knew that if Paul became puffed up, that he could no longer use him. He knew that if Paul became arrogant and proud, then he would have to put him on the back burner. So there was given to Paul a thorn in the flesh. Paul said, and lest I should be exalted above measure, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. You see, in God's economy, it's not how big you are, but rather it's how little you are. The teachings of the Bible are sometimes paradoxical to the teachings of our society today. You see, in God's economy, God said, if you want to live, you got to die. If you want to receive, then give. If you want to receive your sight, then become blind. If you want to save your life, then give it away. And if you want to go up, you got to get down. You got to get down. So God took and He gave Paul a thorn in the flesh. And Paul said, unless I should be exalted above measure, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. It's the reason for Paul's thorn, but I want you to notice the resource of Paul's thorn. Look at verse number 8. Paul said, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times. Three times Paul prayed and asked God to remove his thorn. You say, preacher, did God ever answer Paul? He sure did. Look at verse number 9. I love the way that it starts, Brother Sam. And he said unto me. Did God answer Paul? He sure did. 
Did he ever give him an answer to his prayer? He sure did. And he said unto me, it would do good as Christian folks if we would understand that sometimes no is God's answer. How many of you has got children this morning? Have your kids ever asked you to go somewhere and you said no? Have they ever asked you to buy them something and you said no? Have they ever asked you for a privilege and you said no? John and Glenda tell you, I heard the word no a lot growing up in my life. God's answer was no. Just like you've told your children before, no. And as a matter of fact, it, when you said no, that was your final answer. I used to get my tail tore up. Daddy'd say no, and I'd say, but. And before I could even get the rest of it out of my mouth, boy, the belt was coming off. It was his final answer. It wasn't up for discussion. And God told Paul, no. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. I want to say something about the word sufficient. The word sufficient there means more than enough. Paul said, God, God told Paul, he said, Paul, I can't remove your thorn. I can't remove that burden out of your life. But I'll tell you what I'll do this morning, Paul. I'll give you grace that's more than enough. I'll give you grace that is sufficient for thee. I remember several years back, Brother Sam, there was a lady in our church over in Georgia by the name of Miss Johnson. And I guess Miss Johnson, she suffered more than anybody that I've ever seen in my life. She had cancer in her stomach. They operated two times and was unsuccessful. And uh, eventually that cancer worked its way up into her throat and into her esophagus. She didn't want to die at the hospital. She wanted to die at home. In the last two weeks of Miss Johnson's life, the only uh, nourishment that she received was from ice chips being placed in her mouth and it would melt and just kind of trickle down her throat. Her favorite singer was Squire Parsons. We was in, had camp meeting going on there at the church and uh, Squire was at the church with us that week singing. And I remember one night after church, uh, our pastor, he came up to me. He said, hey, he said, we're going to go see Miss Johnson tomorrow. And Brother Squire is going to go. He said, you want to go with us? I said, absolutely. So boy, I get on the phone, I call my salesperson at work and told him, I said, hey, got some things going on, I'm not going to be in tomorrow. You, you take care of things, run things at the office, and he did. And we loaded up and we went to Miss Johnson's house the next day to see her. And we knocked on the door and her husband let us in and carried us back to a little bedroom where she was laying on the bed. We walked in and Brother Barry, he, he said, Miss Johnson, he said, you know who I am? And she looked up and she said, oh, yes. It's my pastor. And she said, the little preacher boy's here too. And he said, yes, ma'am. He said, Miss Johnson, we brought somebody to see you today. He said, we brought Squire Parsons. He said, what's, what's your favorite song that Brother Squire sings? And she said, I love that song. I know what Jesus did for me. And the words had no sooner left her mouth and Brother Squire reared back in that little bedroom and he lifted up his voice and he sung with all of his heart. I wasn't there by the shores of Galilee when Jesus touched those blinded eyes and made them see. And though I didn't see the empty tomb that day, I still believe for I know what Jesus did for me. I believe there's power in the blood of the Lamb and I believe there's healing in the touch of His hand. But the greatest of all miracles was when Jesus saved me. Yes, I know what Jesus did for me. And Miss Johnson, she had her hands up in the air and she was clapping and she was saying something. I couldn't quite make it out, Brother Sam. So I got a little bit closer and she was saying, I'm so weak, but I'm leaning on a mighty strong arm. I'm so weak, but I'm leaning on a mighty strong arm. And aren't you so glad this morning, beloved, that when the cares of life 
begin to mount up over us and it's more than we can carry. Aren't you glad that you can lean on a mighty strong arm? And when you have to follow that dearest loved one to the grave, you can lean on a mighty strong arm. And when you get that dreaded doctor's report, you can lean on a mighty strong arm. And when we take and we breathe our last breath here and we cross from time into eternity, thank God we can lean on a mighty strong arm. And God said, Paul, I'm not going to remove your burden. I'm not going to remove your thorn. But Paul, I'm going to let you lean on a mighty strong arm. He said, Paul, I can't remove it. But my grace is more than enough. Paul, I'm just going to cover you up in grace and let you lean on a mighty strong arm. I should have told you this earlier, and I just forgot. Let me I'm going somewhere. You, you just hang on with me. We're going somewhere. We're almost there. The third and final truth that I want to share with you this morning is I want you to see Paul's reaction to his thorn. Look at verse 9. He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather... Let me stop and say a word about that, about rather. The connotation, the suggestion that is being made there is instead of. Instead of what? What was... What was Paul referring to? Most gladly, therefore, will I rather, instead of becoming discouraged, instead of giving up, instead of quitting, what, what, was, he, what was Paul referring to there? Verse 9, he said, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory, In my infirmities? Wait a minute. The verse before, Paul prayed three times, Brother Gary. Three times and asked God to remove that thorn out of his life. But now he's shouting about it. Paul's circumstances, they're still the same. That problem, that burden, that thorn, it's still there. But somehow in the circumstances of life, Paul's different. Paul's changed. And he said, most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities. Watch, here it is. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. You see, Paul's thorn, it had produced a flower. It had produced a rose in his life. And that rose was power. It produced power in his life. I've just... August was 17 years that God's been allowing me to preach. But Brother Sam, my life took a drastic change back in 2009 took and made several doctor visits. and I, I, I told you my attitude towards depression had always been just get over it. And I was diagnosed with anxiety and chronic depression. And it changed my life forever. I thought, no. I, I even remember sitting there on the side of that bed and I told that doctor, I said, Doc, there ain't no way. I'm a preacher. My life forever changed. It got to where my attitude, my thoughts, my conversation, it all revolved around my thorn. It took control of my life. My thoughts was negative. My conversation was negative. And I remember one Sunday I was up in Piedmont, Alabama preaching. And as we got done preaching, I walked out into the vestibule and I looked on the wall there and there was a picture of just a huge field of roses. 
And there was a little encryption at the bottom of that picture. And I walked over there and read it. And it said, I'm glad thorns grow roses. And when I read that, it was like the Holy Ghost just smoked me. Are you with me this morning? Yes. Are you listening? Amen. Here's the message. Talking about things that we take for granted in life. Met a man up in rough in North Carolina by the name of Rodney. Rodney was born with a warped and a twisted body. Couldn't walk. And I remember one night during that revival, he said, Preacher, pray for me. Pray for me that I'll walk again one day. He said, I know I'm going to walk when I get to heaven. But Preacher, I'm talking about just big old tears rolling down his face. He said, Preacher, what I'd give just to be able to stand one time down here. How many times have we stood in this service this morning? Really not thought anything about it. I remember my, my nanny, my great grandmother. She was blind. And one day I was over at her house and they had went and bought Nanny a new living room suit. I walked in, was talking to her, and I said, Nanny, I said, your furniture sure is pretty. I, I, I like it. And she said, son, describe it to me. Tell me what it looks like. I began to the best of my ability to describe that furniture to Nanny. And I said, Nanny, I said, it, 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 it's brown. It, 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 it's beautiful. I said, but Nanny, I said, brown's, it's, it's not a bright color. I said, if you had on an orange dress or a red dress and wore it to church, everybody would spot you. They'd see it. It's bright. I said, but brown, it, it, it's beautiful in its own way. I said, but it, it's not bright like orange and red. I, I said, it, it, it's dull. I, I, I guess, Nanny, it's kind of like black. But when I said those words, Brother Gary, the smile left her face. She said, son, you don't have to tell me about black. I know what that looks like. Talking about things that we take for granted. You know, the truth of the matter is this morning, we're not always going to have the best health in life. Young people, you're not always going to have mom and daddy. You won't always have your kids. So if we're going to take and enjoy the roses in our life, we better enjoy them while we can. Won't be long. Summer's gone. That first frost is going to come. Those flowers are going to fade. They're going to die. You may not be able to see it this morning. But I promise you, beloved, I promise you upon the authority of God's Word, God has given us roses all throughout our life. Just handfuls of purpose. God's given to each and every one of us. Brother Ronnie, Brother Paul, y'all come with an invitation this morning. Here it is. You may be here this morning. You may have a thorn in your life. As I said earlier, each and every one of us, we've got thorns. And if we went around the room this morning, we could all talk about those problems in our life that we're having to deal with. And it may be that this morning you just need to come to this altar you need to talk to God about your thorn. Don't miss the flowers in your life. I promise they're there. You may just need to come. You, you know somebody else that's battling a thorn. And you want to come and talk to God for them. And I don't know, it may be this morning that maybe some of your flowers are here this morning. 
things to be thankful for. Your pastor, your church, mom and dad, your spouse, handfuls of purpose. Brother Sam, I think it'd be good. I think it'd, I think it'd be an honor this I think it'd be in order this morning just to go to them and let them know how much you love them and appreciate them. Don't fail to see the roses that God's placed in your life this morning. He said, Paul, I can't remove your thorn, but I'm going to give you grace that's more than enough. Whatever you're facing this morning, God's got enough grace for you. Whatever the need is in your life, He can meet that need. Would you be obedient this morning? Would you respond as we sing this morning?